Hello there. Many times when I upload a video to YouTube or post it on Reddit, many people ask me how is it that I do the, the transformation between still images right into a video. And my usual answer is that I use Python to do that image processing and that it's a lot more boring than it could seem. But I thought there's a chance here to, to show a bit of what that processing pipeline looks like. So I chose here this, this video of sand moving under the rover Curiosity. This is on Mars and this has been taken with the Mardi camera, that is the downwards facing camera that was used to get the, the descent film, right, when Curiosity arrived on Mars with the sky crane. There are wonderful videos of that around. And it is now used to see the, the ground underneath the rubber and to check a bit on the wheels. There are other cameras that are used for the wheels too. So we have this video from 2017 where we can check how on January 23rd the sand was in a certain position, there was wind, and the following day it had changed, right? The, the rover didn't move, we can see that on the rocks that are still there. And uh, we can see how the winds sort of move the, move the rocks and raise a bit of the, the trails. I have downloaded that video. I have it here on my computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Python. <clears throat> I'm going to bring the, the libraries that I'll be using. And um, I'll be using a, a few wrappers that I wrote, mainly that Stargazers thing. There's a lot of stuff over there that helps me keep sane while working. And well, first I loaded the video, and that wrapper lets me write this super simple code. And voila, I read all the frames in the video. And well, there are not that many frames actually, it's just two images. Usually, I wouldn't work from an MP4 video on Reddit, I would go to the archives of Curiosity and download it and process the images on my computer to have um, the best quality that, that I can extract from the raw data. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to work with a video from Reddit to show a more, uh, I don't know, down-to-earth example could be, but well, it's actually up on Mars. Um, again, this is just for simple usage and to show you how it looks like. This will not give me a super high quality result. And uh, what I'm going to do is a video. So for that video, I'm going to need a code to tell OpenCV to, to use the motion JPEG colic. And I'm going to instantiate a writer. And well, basically I'm telling OpenCV, I need uh, an AVI file with this codec that's going to be 30 frames per second and this resolution. It's not awesome resolution, but again, this is just an example to show how the, the processing looks like. And first I'm going to use, I'm going to calculate the, what is called the optical flow between the two images. And this flow basically tells us how an image gets warped to another. And there are many examples of optical flow around. The thing is that it has its limitations, and I'm going to use uh, a list to save the intermediate frames here. And what I'm going to do is simply this. I'm going to interpolate two seconds of video in between the two images. Oh, and before I do that, I should append the zeroth frame here, the first frame. And I'm going to make it a copy just to be sure that I'm not altering the original. So again, for I in range, like I said, this is going to give me two seconds of video to see how the, the image is turned from the first image that we have on January 23rd to the other on January 24th. Of course, this isn't really like what happened, right, if the rubber had been filming, because what we had from one day to another, night passed, but whatever. It's going to give us an idea of how the sand moved. And in general, I work with, with other kind of images that don't have this super long time span. Well, they do, but the effects of day and night are not 
so so big so that is already done and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna extend right what I already have and I'm gonna make it go forwards and then backwards and then what I will do is I'm gonna repeat this five times in the video file this is gonna run a lot faster because it's just simply reading something and writing it and OpenCV takes care of, of the codec and finally I'm gonna release the writer and I'm gonna come over here and it's in this streamed AVI file so I open it and we can see that yes the transformation is more or less correct but there's some kind of ghosting in this area in the middle that means that the optical flow algorithm didn't get um, couldn't find really the, the transformation, how things were moving, and uh, it, it's making that artifact. It, it, it looks weird, it looks like something is appearing um, out of nowhere, and well, th there are other areas that are more or less fine. Over here we can see the good smooth movement, and around here too. So we have to improve this, and uh, Earlier this year, I, I took a bit more of, uh, I took a bit of time, and what I did was simply um, a new algorithm that's um, that's a bit different from what I used to to use before. That works on multiple scales at the same time. Now, um, lately there have been uh, many many YouTubers, many redditors that take uh, what is called a Dane. Uh, neural network and that is a special kind of net neural network that can do optical flow and, and works in a multi-scale approach too what I did is a lot simpler and um, it gives quite similar results but I have the advantage that it runs completely on CPU so it's also quite faster and truth be told uh, my computer has an old GPU that couldn't really run this, so I'm CPU bound for a moment. Uh, okay, so I have the zero frame, and this is I'm gonna need the new optical flow. And uh, basically, the way I programmed it is super simple. It works exactly the same, but it works on a different on on multiple scales. That's why it's called multi-flow instead of flow. And uh, it'll look exactly the same as before, but instead of twin, I'm going to use multi-twin here, and that's it. Now you can see it's taking a bit more time for processing every single frame, because like I said, it's doing more work, uh, but this is still a lot faster. And again, this is running CPU bound on a standard CPU from a couple of years ago, this uh, not something terribly heavy to process and we're going to see the results right away let's see there and i have to append that, that i had forgotten about that i'm going to append the last frame because this went from 1 to 59th it, it got almost there but it, it didn't go all the way and again i'm going to repeat this uh, making it bouncy right forwards and then backwards again and I'm going to make a new video here so that we can compare it. I'm going to call it twin to multi, basically the same. <clears throat> this is all the same too. And once this is finished, I'm going to release the writer. I can go right in that one. And this is it. This is twin to multi. I, I had a previous version that basically is the same. So you can see how the solar algorithm is working uh, a bit more smoothly around these large movements. Um, the previous run I saw a, a place where there were a few artifacts, but I'm not really seeing them now. If you can spot them, you can tell me, oh, there it is. But in general, you can see how this works a lot more smoothly than the other. Ah, right there. That's not, uh, well, there's a lot of detail that's sort of disappearing from one day to the other. That's well, the sand moving around. And, well, 
it is sand. It is uh, something that flows, that's non-rigid. So this this isn't really the best use case for this. Um, with more definite movement of, of rigid bodies, this works a lot better. But this should give you an idea of what my processing workflow looks like and what can be done with these tools. And well, basically that's it. Usually, if I were doing um, something a lot more uh, with a lot more effort, um, I would take this and instead of writing directly with the OpenCV's writer modules, um, what I do is save as the, the intermediate frames as PNG files and then compile them, compile them with FFmpeg um, to to get a higher quality video and then edit that uh, inside an, an editor. I, I use OpenShot, but I'm really looking forward to, to something else. Um, and, well, that's it. Okay, that was a really abrupt ending, so I'm taking the chance now in post-production to put a loop around the, the final video a few times while I give it a more human-like closing. Uh, I hope you liked the video, uh, me showing how all, all these uh, tools and algorithms and functions that I've been programming over the last year work and how I use them to, to make these videos. And if you liked it, uh, please subscribe to the channel, give, it, give the video a thumbs up and share with other people that you think might like it. And hope I see you all around soon.